We exalt you, Lord. We exalt your name. We exalt your majesty. We exalt you for who you are. We exalt you for who you are. Lord Jesus, for helping us in time of need, for making thyself strong and showing thyself strong. Teach us your ways, teach us always your ways. Help us. To honor you. Help us to magnify your holy name. Help us, Lord Jesus, to acknowledge your goodness in our lives. To acknowledge, Lord God, your spirit. Cause us to walk in order to please you. All the days of our lives. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Satisfy our heart with your food, with your heavenly bread. Satisfy us with your heavenly bread. Transform us from within so our light, Lord God, may be able to light, to shine. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word of the Lord today, he has provided unto us. Hallelujah. Grace, can you help us? The word of today has provided unto us power to operate and to function. Hallelujah. We realize that indeed in the kingdom, we cannot operate until we receive power. For truth, the Lord Jesus has told to his disciple, Terry. Hallelujah. Terry, Terry. Dwell, dwell, wait, wait, 
until you receive power. You see, in the book of John, they receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. But then it says you still need to tarry until you receive power. So today the Lord is bringing us into that breakdown. Because you see, the Holy Ghost, for you to be baptized with, is one thing. The fruit of it becomes prophecies, becomes tongues, becomes the fruit of the Spirit. But you ought now to be able to actually be endued or imbued with power so you can function. Because you can speak in tongues and still fail to function and to operate. The operation and the functionality that God is talking about is not just in your spiritual realm and area. It is also in the physical atmosphere. Remember last time we were talking on how the Lord Jesus given us an image of two Christians. One followers of God, follower of Jesus Christ and disciple of Christ. Both of them received the seed. And one prayed with the seed from, um, um, from spring all the way to, to fall. And then in winter, he realized he had to plant the seed. Hallelujah. And another one received the seed. He planted it in spring while he was praying. And in winter, he rested to eat from his labor. But that functionality, that ability to think through, that ability to think and to foresee comes from power. So you can operate in that dynamic. Are you know what I'm saying? Other than that, you will be spiritually sound but fail to operate accurately. So power to operate and to function. Shall we read from the book of Luke, chapter 4? We're going to take first in the King James Version and end with the Amplify Version. So we go start from verse 14 of Luke, chapter 4, verse 14. Luke chapter 4, mm -hmm. starting from verse 14. Uh -huh. And Jesus returned. And Jesus returned. In the power. In the power. You see, he did not return in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. He did not return in the Holy Ghost. But he returned in the power, power of okay. the spirit. spirit. And you will realize and notice that this was after he was what? Tempted. Amen. The Bible says he was led by the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Afterward, he returned. Amen. In the power. Not just in the Baptist. Not just in the Holy Ghost. Not just. You, I, you know what I'm saying? In the power of the spirit into Galilee. Why? Why? Because he needed now to function. He needed now to operate. So until he received that power, which is also his spoke to the disciple, Terry. They were with Christ. They knew Christ. But Peter did not have power to operate. That's why he was afraid before the little girl. Are you what I'm saying? But he knew Christ. He loved Christ. And he was chosen, selected, and appointed. Are you what I'm saying? When power to operate fails you, you run like Elijah. And yet, you are appointed. And yet, you are a child of God who has been set by the Lord. Power to operate and to function. Let's go back. Read again for me. Luke chapter 4, 
starting from verse 14. Mm -hmm. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Mm -hmm. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Are you, there are some people who are not ready to hear your gospel until the power of God manifested through you. There are some people who are not ready to speak and to work with you until the power of God, the power of knowledge, the power of prophecy, the power of uh, wisdom and understanding is manifested through you. And yet, you are a child of God. Are you what I'm saying? Power to operate calls the name of Jesus Christ to go ahead of him. Do you know this? The power to operate, the power in the spirit, calls the name of Jesus Christ to go ahead of him. So before he arrives, whatever he has done here, it started being talked about until there. So when it comes, there is no longer need for him to justify himself. Door opens. And the fame of the Lord that is ahead of him speaketh of him. That's why he tells to the, um, the Pharisee, he said, if you don't believe in me, at least believe in the, the works. You will notice he does not say necessarily believe in the word. It says, if you don't believe in me, the word, believe into the demonstration of that word, the power to operate. And I noticed that for us Christians, for us children of the Lord Jesus, we have often time being imbued with the spirit, but we fail to understand that power so that we operate accurately. Terry, until you receive power to operate. Power to operate is what causes you to act like Peter. You go at the, how we call it? At the time of prayer. The Bible says he went at the temple and at the beautiful gate was a lame sitting. Amen? Who used to ask alms. When Peter arrived, he said, get up in the name of Jesus Christ. But he noticed that the man did not get up. So what did he do? He realized that in himself he had power to operate. So what does he do? He grabbed his hand, amen, and he pulled him up. Can, can we get the, that verse, please? And the notice inside is that the ankles of the person started being strengthened. And then he got up. The power that is inside of you is what makes you believe that you can operate because beyond the ability that God has given unto you, he has also given unto you the drive to function. You have the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have the spirit of the Lord. You love Christ. But you need... To be in a place where you understand how to operate in that power. It all tied down in the word he gave out to us power of transformation. After you transform it, you need to cause it to operate and function continually. Amen. Verse 1 of chapter 3 of Acts. The Bible says what? Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily oh, Lord Jesus. at the gate Go ahead. Continue, continue, continue. of the temple, which is called Beautiful, mm -hmm. to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arms. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, 
expecting to receive something of them. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's stay here for a moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This is a spirit. That's faith. So it commands to the person through his mind, through his hearing, through his body, through his member, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. At that point, the functionality of the faith in him should have caused that person to do something. Because oftentimes the Lord Jesus did so. He will see, he will say, rise up and walk. And right there, the person gets up, pack up and walk. But you see, the power to operate is different. The Bible says that after that he has told him, when I say after, why? Because the Bible gives a, a period, hallelujah, and then in a verse 7, goes by doing say what? And, hallelujah, and he had to observe that as he spoke the, the, the word of faith, he saw that the word of faith, will see struggling inside the person, but he knows he has power to operate and cause him to function. Hallelujah. So he speaks by faith, but he notices that the faith he has spoken into the person, he's not rising up. You will notice at that time, he does not pray again. At that time, he entered into the power to operate. So the Bible says, and he does not pray again. And he operates, grab his hand to cause the person to function. Does it make sense? Because the power to operate and to function makes you know that when you have spoken the word in faith and it does not come, it means you need to move it. You need to shake it. Are you what I'm saying? Let's read. Read for me again. Verse 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Mm. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And what happened? And immediately... Notice something. When did that happen immediately? After he operated in the power. The immediately could have happened when he has spoken in faith. Because he knew that he was having faith. But the notice and the, the exercise of his faith did not bring the fruit he expected. But he knows he spoke in faith. You know, sometimes you speak... And then you know that there is no shadow of doubt in your spirit. You yourself, you know that 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 when you have spoken, it was, it was full of, full of a faith. And then you open your eyes and you don't see the fruit. Hallelujah. One of the mistakes is that we go back to pray. No, there are seasons in which when you are emboldened with power, you need to transfer it. Are you know what I'm saying? When you are deposited, it's like you are like an electric. When electricity comes into something, you need to transfer it. So it continues to come. If you are charged with the power of God and you don't transfer it, you might, expl you, you might implode inside. And dysfunction. Let me abbreviate. If you charge a battery, 
that battery needs to continue to transfer that power that he received in order to continue to receive power. If you charge a battery that does not transfer and it keeps on charging, what happened? Somebody says, Lord, help me. Lord, help me understand that. The Lord Jesus says, out of you will flow what? He didn't say out of you we stay or we be in. Because you need to release so that the power continually comes. If you don't, you implode. Are you what I'm saying? You can be praying and fasting. And as you pray and then you fast, you can sense that the atmosphere has completely changed and that yourself have risen in the position that is completely different. This is power you have been imbued with that. That power is the time for you to transfer it. Because at that time is when you lay hand, that power is transferred, such as Jesus Christ. When the lady came and touched you, the, what happened? Power was transferred. The Lord Jesus says, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to operate. So after you have risen in prayer, you have risen in fasting, and then you know inside of you that there is a boiling, you need to transfer it. Let me give you an example. Let's say you notice that uh, you want to speak with somebody concerning a business or concerning a church or concerning your ministry or your whatever. And then you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray. And then after I pray, I will uh, speak with the person. But direct me. Good. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray concerning the matter. And after that you have prayed, you feel like, uh, you know, you sense that there is something that has shifted. And now you sit down, you say, oh, Lord, lead me. Mistake. <laughs> because you see, the charging that you were doing, it was there that you were receiving from the Spirit of God the stamina to operate. And after you have mentioned and uh, you, you have uh, um, realized that you have been empowered, it is for you to step out and in. I hear what I'm saying. Let's take again Peter to understand that. Peter arrived. Verse 6, he says what? No, let, let, let me go further. Let's go to verse, uh, um, verse, verse 1. Verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple. Go ahead. At the, at the hour of prayer, mm -hmm. being the ninth hour. Now, let me explain this one a little further. These circumstances means that uh, even though, even though he did not enter prayer before to operate, but the fact that uh, he was going into prayer, it means he was going to charge. Does it make sense? But prior to that, the Bible tells us that he already received Power. All of the 120. Hallelujah. That they receive power. And now that they receive power, he was going to recharge power. But he was already in power. So when it goes along the way, he now notice something. And when he notice it, he speaks the power of faith. But after he spoke the word of it, he sees that the functionality in the life of that thing, of that matter, of that business, of that whatever, is not functioning right. He doesn't pray. <laughs> because, Lord oh Jesus, help me with this one. He was already praying. For the Bible said there were all 120 in the upper room praying and fasting. The time to operate is different 
from the time to sit and to seek. When both are confused, you don't have result. So the guy comes and the apostle start praying. He finished praying, he get out. And as they were going in time of prayer, here happens. Verse 2, what? Verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. You see, some people were carrying that man. The Bible said daily. You see, what you have to understand is that you can receive center help that will not make you continue in advance. They were helping him. Daily. But that was not the help he needed. And that help was not causing him a shift. Continue, please. Verse 3. Verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arms. For, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Hallelujah. Amen. The man opened up from within. Expecting to receive something. Sometimes you are attracting the attention of somebody you're looking to speak for or to. At that time, you should not be, you know, <laughs> let, 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 let me break it down. You speak with somebody you have been looking for because there is a deal you want to close or because there is something you want to achieve. And you speak with the person. And then after you say, okay, I'm going to let you to think about it. Oh, Jesus. Don't you know that the enemy, his job is to come to confuse and to sow doubt. At the time when you were speaking to the person, the heart of the person was pricked. At that time is when you tap into it. If not, you go and you come back and the person say, ah, I, have, I have thought about it, but <laughs> even in the... That's why the Lord Jesus said that the children of uh, the devil are wise. Why? Because in the world, they know how to close a deal. We call it close a deal. They know it. In the marketing and sales force, they know that as they're speaking to you, when they see that your eyes are suddenly like bright, bring as they bring, uh, uh, sh shining, they know that uh, you are giving attention. And you know how they know? Because you haven't closed the door. <laughs> you are still listening. Are you know what I'm saying? Even if you are not interested, part of you is still listening. And as you are still listening, they tap into it before you realize you bought it. And when you finish to buy it, ah, I did not need it. You already bought it. <laughs> That's what the Lord Jesus says. Even they are wiser because they know how to operate in those functionalities. When Peter spoke to the men, verse 6, give him that. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. Amen. How many times have we done this? Whether you pray for somebody, whether you pray for sickness, whether you pray for financial breakthrough, whether you pray for anything. You pray and you expect the angels to go to do something. Let me explain something to you. There are times and circumstances where the Lord does not call the angel to go to do something. The Lord will tell you, you move. Hallelujah. So he prayed. He spoke the word of faith. He knew that word must be established. But what happened? Nothing. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Read again. Huh? 
Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given by thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Amen. There are times when that word is spoken, automatically something happens. Amen. But when something does not happen, <laughs> it's not time for you to either doubt or think around or back up. The Bible says at that time, he used the power to operate. Verse 7. Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Do, do you notice what happened here? The word of faith that he spoke in the situation caused every portion of the situation inside of the person to be ready to function. But now they need the adjustment. It's like you have a car. That is coming in pieces. That car is ready to function. But you need to put it together. So you might have things that will function. But until you put them together to cause them to operate, you will pray. The thing went going nowhere. And then he lift him up. And immediately what happened? His feet and ankle bones received strength. His feet and ankle bones received strength. And? And he, leap, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, sometimes we go to do evangelism and we see somebody sick and we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command be healed. And we open our eyes to see if he's healed. <laughs> and then when the person is not healed or when the person is still of shown, I say in the name of Nazareth, I command, which is nothing wrong. I have the thing. When you understand the power to operate, you pray for the person. And the person, you spoke the word. And the person is like in your eyes and in the circumstances, the person is not healed. The first thing to realize is that the person has already received that seed of faith because he gave you opportunity or room to pray for him. That's first thing. So at that time, you need now to speak directly to that whatever that is. In this case here, is to help the person move. The person is having a back pain and then the person cannot bend. You pray and then you say, how do you feel? The person say, I feel a little pain. And then you pray again. No, 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 no. At that time, bend. <laughs> you, you, are you what I'm saying? You're speaking with someone. And you're speaking about a business. And then you tell to the person, ah, I need to have this, 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 this. I need that, 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 that. And then the person says, uh, yeah, but, oh. Uh, but the simple fact, remember this, the simple fact that somebody has your attention, the simple fact that someone is willing to listen what you're saying, at that time, you can make things happen. If you give room, by saying, okay, think about it, I will come here tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow you come. Then you find yourself fasting and praying the more. <laughs> now you have to fast and pray the more concerning the situation. Why? Because there was a door that was open. Once that door is open that you identify that time and that season, you operate into it. Are you following what I'm saying? Let's take Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. Verse 14. From verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, 
and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Where it went out? There in Galilee. From there went out something. What he did and he showed us is that after he has went through the trials, after he has went through the temptation, when he arrived in the power to operate, this caused everything that was set in motion to completely move. In the sense of the Israelites, when they were coming out of Egypt, when they received the power to operate and to function, in another word, to get out, the Bible says that even the enemy came and blessed them. Let me read that again. The power to operate is different than the power to pray. Than the power to fast. Because you have power to pray and fast. But you don't now sit down. You use what you have received as power from the Lord to not move. Look, sometimes you can be in church and you're praying. And you're praying. Somebody was saying that. Somebody was saying that you go in the certain churches, you arrive, the leader or the bishop is praying. The person is praying and praying and praying and praying. And after the person has risen to the third heaven, the person feels that he has been filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And he comes down. And now he sits down and he's like... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So he's sitting alone and... Mm, mm, mm. No. At that time, take your hand, lay on somebody. Release the power. Power to operate and to function. What is this that you need to operate? Let me take an example. We hear we pray. Oh Lord Jesus, let multiplication. Oh, now let them multiplication. Let them multiplication. Good. But you see, as we pray, when you feel charged, just go out and speak to the first person you meet at the at the what is that? At the street. Because you yourself, you know, you there are times you pray, 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 pray. And there are times you feel like you are empty, like you never prayed. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because you need to release whatever that God has deposited in you. So that you continually be a flow of living water. Verse 15. Verse 15. And he taught, and he and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Continue. Sixteen. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day mm. and stood up for, for to read. Mm -hmm. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm. And when he op and and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, mm. "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised." to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what I was saying? He returned in power. He entered in. Now he has all the attention. And as is, let me break it down. As he was praying during the fasting, during the wilderness, when he comes out, he knows he has been empowered. 
he goes, when he opens the rolls of Isaiah, he does not look for it. Are you what I'm saying? He does not look for the chapter. <laughs> Amen. Go back. Go to uh, uh, 16. Verse, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he uh -huh. went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for, the, for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. When he had opened the book, he found or he saw the place. It, 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 it wasn't like a searching through it. This is how he means. You can pray. And as you pray, you pray, you pray. Suddenly you open your Bible. And now you open your Bible, you found the place where it is written. Because at the moment you open, you find right there. I don't know if you have ever noticed, but when you do that, at that time, you know that what you have found, it is God speaking to you directly. I know what I'm saying. And on what you have found, you act upon it. Because you know that God is speaking directly to you. And that conviction is what caused you to operate. So the Lord Jesus comes in power. He opened the role that they gave unto him. When he opens it, he finds the book of Isaiah, what it is saying. This today, I mean, it is said, the Lord has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord is anointed is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Through all this, all he was doing was reading the word. But for him, as he was reading, it was not just a book he was reading, but he was speaking what is about to happen. So as he speak what is about to happen, the Bible now says at that time, the spirits that were in the, I said the spirit, the hearers, the people that were in the synagogue, now they're all fastened to him and they were listening. Hallelujah. And the Bible says what? Verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh -huh. 20. And he closed the book mm. and he gave it again to the minister uh -huh. and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting. Uh -huh. mm. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. When he arrives, after he has went through the time of fasting and prayer, he has went through the time of temptation, he enters the synagogue. And then he sees the people sitting. They give him the book. And he opens the book. He reads from the book. And as he reads from the book, he sees that uh, the word of God says that you have been anointed by the spirit. You have been anointed to clean out, to heal, to preach the gospel. And when he does so, he sees the people and he says, to this day, is what? Fulfilled in where you are hearing what you are hearing now. So it looks, it says, in the name of Jesus Christ, be completely restored and completely put back together in the name of Jesus Christ. Because now there is power to operate in which that power God wants you to transmit, to transfer, because somebody needs to be recharged. And you are in boot. You are filled with the power of God for you to function and for you to operate. You cannot go wrong with this one. Because listen, between prayer and operation, there is always doubt in, be in between. That's why you need to move on time. You need to move on time. There is a difference between having emotional, you know, how I call it. I thank you. <laughs> Amen. And spiritual lead. 
when you know you have been uh, seeking for something in the Lord, you have been speaking of God, you have been searching in the ways, and now suddenly the Lord opens your eyes. At that time, if you have to call somebody, take your phone, call the person. Close the ear. Power to operate and to function. So the Lord returned and he entered and he said he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your He's, eventually he's the one who showed me that whenever I open the word of God that I read this day. Amen. And as I'm reading this day, he didn't say, this day the world will be fulfilled in your hair a year from now. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, today, in this day, as you are hearing it, in the now, in the immediately, this word is fulfilled. So what does it mean fulfill? It means now you are charged with that power. Now you are authorized as a mouthpiece. Now you are being given the ability as a representative of God. So in the now, this word is fulfilled in your hearing. That's when it says now, go and baptize them. Go and make disciples. Go and preach the gospel. Because they have been imbued, filled with the power, and now they can stand every harsh situation. Here's my question. Are you ready to move and to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost? Or are you waiting for the Lord to speak to you? You see, the child of God, it has become, as I say, too much spiritual, overloaded spiritual. But hey, when you live on this earth, I always say, your body is on earth. Amen. You walk with your feet on the earth, but your mind is on heaven. But as long as you walk on this earth, your feet and your body we need it to be fed with the things of this earth. So God will give you the profit to benefit and the profit to operate and the spirit to function. But you got to move. Hallelujah. You got to move because this is a place and a time when God needs to rise you in uh, positions in which if you don't move, somebody else will be risen there. When there are, when there are territories in which God wants the people that he sent to take over, when they don't do that, the enemy does take over. But if you are being trained, by the Lord. The Lord will reserve that territory and nobody will take it until you come. Are you know what I'm saying? When God is training you, he's building you, there are ideas that he has reserved it. So even the scientists of this world cannot think about it. They are attempting, they are searching, they are trying, but they just cannot think about it because it is reserved. But then... Here's the thing. At the moment it is released in the spirit, it is close for you now to move. If you don't, you will be like, ah, I thought about this one. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? And then you'll be like, hey, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> Your portion is thinking about. The other one, it will be manifestation. Power to operate. At that time, God is giving you the grace to have the ears of the people to be fastened unto you. 
is a time to call. It's a time to call. And then to speak that word and to function in that word for the word of God says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So the Lord returned in the power to operate. He returned in the power to function. The three major things of the spirit is that after you are baptized with the spirit, you will speak in tongue and prophesy. But when you speak in tongue and prophesy, it's to charge you so that now you have power to operate. For the word of God says, be, 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 um, book of Jude, it says, beloved, build up your most holy faith praying in the spirit. But when you have built up, what do you do with that? Amen. You have to operate. That's the same word as he says, stir up the gift that is within you. That was transferred by the laying of the hands or the spirit. So as you have received, when it is boiling in you, if you boil too long, you will go down. Put water on the fire. Let it boil. You will boil. 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 And finally, you will evaporate. So if your intention was to take that water to pour out over, I don't know, you know in Africa when we want to do chicken, we kill the chicken and then we take uh, boil water, we pour that on it so that uh, you can now strip the, the, the feather quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. So after you kill the chicken, the chicken is in the, in the pot and then you have boiled the water and you finish to boil the water and now you go pray. <laughs> You, you come back, the, 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 the water is cold. <laughs> now you call, fire of the Holy Ghost, fall in it. Fire of the Holy Ghost, fall in it. It doesn't work this way. <laughs> Hallelujah. That chicken, you won't eat it because that chicken will be still cold. <laughs> Amen. That's why you need to operate on time. You notice, after Jesus Christ, same example with Peter, with all the disciples, when they were facing the situation, they were not praying about it because they prayed about it. When you pray, it's for God to give you lead. And when you see the lead, it's for you to take it. Does it make sense? One, it is, it, first and foremost, it is disobedience that God shows you what to do and you pray. It's disobedience. Because now your prayer has become now your own. It's like a, for you, you become your own God. You pray God. God gives you the answer. He says go. And you sit down. Oh, Father, I thank you. I honor you. Oh, 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 you have opened the door. Beautiful door. Magnifique door. But the door is waiting for you to go in. See the children of Israel. They went and he told unto them, Why are you crying? Get up and go forward, right? What would have happened if they were still sitting? Oh Lord, you have delivered us from the hand of the enemy. Oh, we thank you. That would have been disobedience. He told them, Go in the land and take over. The Bible said they went, they looked at the land and they saw the the, the giant, they came back. They say, oh, Lord, oh, we are too small. Fight for us. No. <laughs> Amen. He said, you go take over. That's what the Bible talks about praying amiss. Hallelujah. If there was not a wrong way to pray, a wrong time of attitude of prayer, the Lord would have not said that we can pray amiss. 
we've missed the point of prayer because we oftentimes exaggerate in on how we ask God. If you ask God and God says, now you have given unto you, oh Lord, oh yes, Lord God, open it now. No. <laughs> now you become like a Pharisee. You repeat and you get nothing. Are you what I'm saying? So when you pray and then the Lord opens unto you, he said, now, my son, my daughter, you have been now imbued with power. Go. I always said, you can pray while you go. Hallelujah. But you cannot go back and pray about it. But you can pray as you go. Prayer is not a replacement or a substitute for move. Let me read again. Prayer is not a replacement or a substitute for move. When the Lord Jesus Christ was faced with his situa situation and issues, before to be faced with those issues and situation, he was already developing a life of prayer. Your backbones to receive power. And now when you are faced before the situation, you can speak to that situation and that situation must need to obey. Amen. Developing a life of prayer for you to be charged with the power of the Holy Ghost. But when you are charged, you need to release the power. That's why you are charged for. You need to release because there are people are waiting for you to be revealed. So if you don't move out where they see, hallelujah. They are waiting. The word of God said that the world is what? The, the creation is longing for the, the manifestation of the sons of God. So when your time has arrived and God says, now move, now speak, now do, do not sit down. He applies to all your level of life. He applies to your spiritual life, to your, pr uh, your prayer life. He applies to your businesses, to your health. He applies to all level of your life because when God says move, Operate. You have received the power to operate. Verse 21 of Luke 4. Verse 21 of Luke 4. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you notice something? In the chapter 4, it started by saying that he has went through the wilderness. Have you ever been in wilderness? Have you ever been in a situation where you have felt the temptation, you have felt the opposition, you have felt the challenges? If you haven't been, you're going to be in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you have been in, the Bible says you have come out. And as you have come out, is a time for you now. Amen? Is a time for you now. To operate. If you are thinking about doing a business, it's the time for you now. If you are thinking about building something, it's the time for you now. Because remember, you pray to receive answer. And when you receive answer, you do not pray to receive answer. <laughs> Amen. When you receive answer, you move to operate in that answer and to make it functional. This morning, the Lord spoke. And what he spoke is what I'm speaking. He gave you power to operate and to cause it to function. Sometimes things may have failed, not because God was not good, but because you have not tarried. Are you what I'm saying? But now that you have received power to operate, it's the time to move. You receive power in order to cause it to function. 
Then the disciples, let's take me back, Acts chapter 3. And pull for me verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed on, unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Hallelujah. Amen. This same situation happened to me. I was in a position where I needed somebody to do something. And they told me you need to make that type of deposit, of monetary deposit. But I know that before I reached them, God was the one who spoke to me. So when I reached to them, they said, before we do anything, we expect from you to give us the money or the finances that we require in order for us to do something. But before I spoke to them, and before I ever looked them up, I was waiting for power. I was waiting for the Spirit of God. So when the Spirit of God now said, now it is a time, I went with my hand empty. And when they asked for the finances in my hands, I told them, what you're asking, I don't have. But I tell you what I have. Do what I ask. Before they realize, they did what I asked. Without, <laughs> without me giving them what they ask. Why? Because it was God who sent me. I hear what I'm saying. So I will no longer give room to the enemy. If I would have gone and says, okay, think about it. I know the last time I did that, the person never called me back again. <laughs> Power to operate is in the time in which you have identified that God has raised you up. God has caused you to be. God has given you the opportunity. God has opened the door. God has made it happen. At that time, even if he is your enemy, when God says, now it's time, it is midnight, get up and go. The Bible says, even your enemy say, please take it and go. Because the time have arrived. When they were under the plagues in the book of Genesis, the plagues came and hit the people of Egypt. But throughout the time, the people of Egypt did not give them no nothing. Hallelujah. They didn't give them nothing. They didn't go to them to say, okay, we realize that your God is hitting us left and right. Please uh, take this one to pray your God. No, they didn't. Because it was not the time. But when the time have arrived, for them now to function outside of slavery, they did not negotiate no nothing. Hallelujah. Because by then, God has moved so strongly that if they were going at, at, at midnight, I say midnight, if they were going after midnight, let's say around 2 a.m., they would have missed everything. I say they would have missed everything. Spiritual life and spiritual realm are like door in which you approach and he opens. But you must step through. Esther, the queen, she was at the place of a door. And when she stood there, the Bible says that the Mordecai told her, that this very time where you're standing at that time, you must move in. For there is a spiritual door open for them to win over the enemy. In the physical, she did not see any door. In the physical, she saw death. Because in the physical, she had the understanding that if she goes in that door, she will be buried. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here's a problem. She was not herself going in that door. She was being appointed by God. Hallelujah. 
to rise. So once you know and you realize that God has sent you, God has spoken to you, you can step into anything. You will notice that the Lord will be the one causing even the people who do not want to hear, to listen. Talk about Pharaoh. Pharaoh called himself a God. But you see, it was God who sent Moses there. So even though Pharaoh was calling himself God, he had given here. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? When you understand the power of transformation and the power to operate, you know that the what you see is an opportunity that God is giving you to switch it around. So you cannot look the same way people look at. You cannot process that information the same way people process the information at. A lady sent me something. She said, listen, you want to do this business in that country. But she sent me a picture. She said, oh, look, there is a uh, I would say concur, competitor who is also doing the same thing. And he did a big billboard showing all those different things. And then when I saw it, you know what I, what I thought? Because see, there is a market. And in that market, you're thinking if you arrive the first, you're going to reap, you know, the produce. And then you find out that as you're arriving in that market, there is somebody that was there before you. When I saw it, you know what I thought of? You yourself. Power of transformation on the basis of which word? When you arrive, where God is going to give you, you see something else there. What is that? You arrive in a place that God is going to give you, but you see somebody occupying it. Huh? Huh? No, no. Uh, you no, know, I'm, I'm talking about the basis of the word. Which part of the word give us that basis? You arrive in the land and you see something else. Come on, yo. Huh? No. Yeah. Who told them that you will have the land? God. But when they arrive in the land, what did they see? Giants. Hallelujah. That giant, what does it mean? In a world of business, it means giant businesses. Corporates. Who their feet are like on the ground. <laughs> and you see your own business like a, a grasshopper. <laughs> are you what I'm saying? But you see, when you know how to apply every situation in your life through the word of God, you know the word of God speaks to every situation to your life. So, when she sent me that picture, she said, see, a big billboard. There is a giant that has arrived there. And I say to my wife, I say, you see, that giant. Because in that place, they don't know about that product. So I said to my wife, I said, you see, that giant is now making free advertisement for us. Because now people are going to know what it is, that product. And then we will come and we will give to them. <laughs> oh, somebody say amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are, not, you, are not, you are not be concerned about a competitor. You are only saying the competitor making a way for you. You know what I'm saying? That drives, makes you not to be afraid. That drives, makes you to know now you have received power to operate. That drives of the Spirit of God makes you to know now you are in your time. By the Spirit of the enemy will make you all I have I arrived too late. No, you are on time. When the Lord Jesus says, <laughs> Amen. When the Lord Jesus says, Amen, hallelujah, on time. 
So all the years that the conquer worm have devoured, going to be restored seven times. So I care less on who is in the land. It is called a giant. A giant is set to fall. Does it make sense? Because something that is already on the floor, uh, on the floor, on the ground, I ain't gonna fall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What fall is what is up. What is already on the ground has not fall. He's already laying there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I arrive and I see the giant. Strategically speaking, in the spirit, you see that giant. And then you see that the height of it is clarity for vision to hit. That's why when David looked at the giant, he only saw with clarity the forehead and the heat of it. <laughs> because it was clear. He, he could not miss it. If it was small, then he has to take loops. I say loops. Binocular. Binoculars. Binoculars. I say binoculars or binoculars. Binoculars. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, then he has to take it and try to identify where is the, the middle of the of the of the forehead. That giant. He was not skinny like me. He was big. His head was big enough. So when David looked up, he said, I know where to hit. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. So when you have that set mind, that type of mindset, what you see becomes an opportunity for you to overcome. Because now you know that the one who sent you is the same one who will also give you the victory. You receive power to operate. Power to function. Every opportunity that God creates in the land, as much as in the spirit, it is for you to be a builder of the kingdom. God knows that there are not many who want to build his kingdom. But even those who don't want to build his kingdom, there are many of them who have their way out. And God says, even if we look at them, don't fret. Because the one whom I have sent and the one whom I'm raising, they are greater and more than conqueror. The Lord Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days. He didn't waste his time. So you may feel like you have been around for long and then you think that you didn't start on time. No. As you're hearing this word today, hallelujah, as, say, as I'm hearing this word today, the Lord God, my God, is restoring all the years that the conquer one have stolen seven times, seven times. Because it's the now I'm hearing it. He's a repositioning me. You see, when you have a GPS, and I always say it, when you lose track, you hear exactly. You hear the GPS say, recalculating. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God is the best, the best, the better GPS. He saw that you missed the first turn. But he has more than one turn in his pocket. He is not bankrupt of strategies. He is not bankrupt of avenues. He is not bankrupt of recalculation. So when you miss the first time and now God opens your eyes, it is the time for you in the now to say now that God 
has opened it and recalculated my position. It happens that I'm arriving faster than I thought I would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is the one recalculating all the years that the conquer worm have stolen. And now he's opening a new. And people will say, but how have you done? You have just arrived and look how far you've gone. Because the God called you. The same one had mercy on you and recalculated everything. You must be willing to step in. You must be willing to step in. With God, it's like a, a eagle. The eagle with a, his little, he brings his nest on the top of the mountain, put his little in, and the little eagle does not know how to fly. But the little eagle has ability to fly. He never practiced his wing yet, but he has wings. And you notice that the eagle, what he does, kind of pick up his little and drop that little in the open. <laughs> now you're thinking, the Lord has certainly, no, the Lord has dropped you in the open. In a speed in which you're thinking you're falling. No. The wind is helping you to spread your wings. Are you know what I'm saying? Because the height of it will always help you to soar. So when you see the situation suddenly becoming weird, then you know God is in the work. Because God will not let you down simply because you missed it. Are you know what I'm saying? Can he? Yes, he can. Because he's God. But the difference here is that he said that he's faithful even when we are unfaithful. So the matter is no longer on us. The matter on his name. He says, I will not let my name be ashamed. So now I come back. The Bible said the word of God said that the Lord Jesus returned now in the spirit of uh, in the power of the spirit. You have been in the wilderness. You have been in the place where you will stop. Now that you're returning. The Bible says that you are returning in the power of the spirit. Hallelujah. To operate and to function. Today. This day. This word of the Lord. Is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this day, this word of the Lord is fulfilled in your hearing. Go, operate, and function. Unlock and reposition in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Amen.